Okay, uh, welcome back. So, what we will talk about today is the following problem that of sorting a list of numbers. Okay. So, what is a typical example? I write down the numbers from 1 to 5, but not in increasing order, I write them in some permuted order. So, I write 5, 3, 4, 1, 2, for instance, and now the problem is to try and sort these in increasing order. Okay. So, which means you must try and uh, change interchange positions of these numbers such that it now reads 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So, of course, this is a standard uh, problem. So, what we want to do is to arrange these numbers in increasing order. So, there are many different algorithms for sorting lists. One of them is, uh, is the following. You do a sequence of comparisons. Okay. So, what we do is the following adjacent comparison. So, you take 5 and 3, you take the first two numbers in the list. If they are in the wrong order, which means that the first number is larger than the second, then you swap them because you want them in ascending order. So, you swap them provided they are in, uh, in the wrong order, they are in descending order. So, the first two have now been taken care of. So, now you move on and compare the next two numbers in the in the new list. So, again 5 and 4 they are in the wrong order. So, you interchange them, you swap them, you make this 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. Okay. So, now the first two uh, the first two numbers and the second and third numbers are in are in correct order. So, now you move on to the next pair and again you swap them if they are in the wrong order. So, in this case again you need to swap. So, you interchange them make them 1, 5, 2 and again you move on to the last two numbers which in this case you again need to swap. Okay, so, this is a sequence of numbers that you generate of, of uh, lists that you generate. Now, observe at this point uh, you know what, what you have with this is that um, the number 5 is in the correct place. So, what this has really managed to do is that the number 5 is in the appropriate place which is in this case the very last. But of course, the rest of the numbers are not necessarily in the correct order. So, you need to keep doing this. So, once 5 has reached its correct place, you start again from the uh, from the beginning. You again look at 3, 4 and you again swap them if they are in the wrong order. So, in this case there is no need to swap. So, you do not do anything. So, then you, you focus your attention on the next two numbers, in this case 4, 1. They are in the wrong order. So, of course, you need to swap those two now, makes 3, 1, 4, 2, 5. So, the window now moves from 4 1 to the next set of two numbers. So, it moves to 4 2. So, again you need to swap. So, let me write this out here. It now becomes 3 1 2 4 5 and now you compare the last two numbers and here you do not really need to swap because they are in the correct order. Okay. So, now at this point you have you have sort of scanned the list again and what happens is that both 4 and 5 are in their correct positions but the first 3 may not be. So, you again begin from the first, you start at 3 1 if they are in the wrong order you swap. So, it becomes 1 3 2 4 5. Now, you move your window one step to the right, you compare these if they are in the wrong order then you swap and now you are done. Okay. So, what you what you get at the very end of this process is a list in ascending order as required. So, now uh, here is an interesting uh, observation regarding this. If you look at the total number of steps that it took us to get to the correct answer. Okay. So, let us see what, what happened. You started with the, the given list. Now, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5 and then you have step 6, step 7 and step 8. So, when you perform this algorithm 8 times, you get to the, the list in ascending order. So, let us write that down. So, the number of steps required for this particular algorithm where you sort of compare adjacent elements. So, the number of steps required turns out to be 8. And here is an interesting thing. If you look at crossings, so remember all of this is somehow related to permutations. So, let us also do the following. Let us look at the number of crossings of the original permutation. Number of crossings 
in the original permutation. So, what do I mean by the original permutation pi? I think of it as well let us write it in two line notation. Think of the, the original list of numbers as just being uh, it just tells you 5, 3, 4, 1, 2. So, this is the original list of numbers that is given there. I think of it as a permutation, it is a permutation of the numbers 1 through 5. So, I have written that permutation down in two line notation. So, let us uh, count the total number of crossings in pi. So, well I could draw the crossing diagram, but uh, for once let us just use the formal definition of crossings, which is I need to look for all pairs i comma j, where i is smaller than j, but pi of i is bigger than pi of j. This is the crossings condition, crossing condition. So, let me look for all pairs of numbers like that. So, from the top row. So, for example, i is smaller than j. So, I look at 1 and 2, pi of i, 5 is greater than 3. So, surely 1 and 2 are in the crossing list. Similarly, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. Each of these pairs counts as a crossing, okay, because they satisfy the definition of crossing. Similarly, if you look at, uh, let us see, so for 2, so I have 2, 4 and 2, 5. For 3, I get 3, 4, 3, 5 and that is it. So, this is a full list of crossings for the given permutation pi okay. and observe there are in fact 8 crossings. Okay. So, the total number of crossings of the original permutation pi also happens to be 8. Okay. So, this is the list of crossings, so this is a set of crossings and so the number of crossings is of course 8. Okay. So, here is another, so and, and this turns out it is not an accident, it is true in, in general. The number of crossings of a given permutation you can think of as being another way of, of well what does it do? It tells you the number of steps you need in this adjacent swapping algorithm before you get the list in ascending order. Okay. It is sort of a measure of how many steps you need to keep doing this adjacent swappings before you finally get the correct uh, the the sequence in ascending order okay and it's sort of instructive to actually count the total number of crossings here so let's count the number of crossings for each of these permutations okay the first permutation that we started out i said well we just counted the number of crossings is 8 now of course then i've done one step of the algorithm and it's sort of interesting to ask well, how many crossings are there here? Okay. So, here is the interesting answer. It turns out to be exactly one less than the original. Now, once more you do this and you wonder how many crossings does this have? Well, it has one less. This has one less crossing. This has one less crossing. This has three crossings. This guy has two. This has one. And of course, the permutation which is in increasing order has no crossings at all because its crossing diagram will just map 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3 and so on. Okay. So, here is the sort of another interesting aspect of crossings. When you perform this algorithm to sort a list, at each step of, of the algorithm, what you end up doing is decreasing the number of crossings by 1. Okay. So, I am sort of going to leave this, this checking as an exercise, but let us just draw the crossing diagram to see why when you go one step in this process, you will decrease from 8 to 7. Okay. So, let us just do that and the rest I will sort of leave for you. So, here is the, the first permutation 5, 3, 4, 1, 2. So, what does it do? It maps 1 to 5. So, I am drawing the picture of the permutation 5, 3, 4, 1, 2. Okay. I am thinking of it as a list. So, I am writing it in one line notation. So, so, remember in two line notation this means 1 maps to 5, 2 maps to 3, 3. So, this is basically the permutation. So, 1 goes to 5 and 2 goes to 3. So, 2 maps to 3. Okay. So, that is the uh, diagram. I am not drawing the rest of the, the lines right now or maybe I will just draw them a little light 3 maps to 4. So, I have 3 maps to 4, uh, 4 maps to 1 
and 5 maps to 2, 5 maps to 2 right. So, that is really the diagram of this permutation. Now, let us just see what happens when you do the first swapping alone ok. So, the first swapping what did it do? It interchanged the positions of the 5 and the 3 because it compared just the first two numbers. So, one step of this algorithm does the following it interchanges 5 and 3 I get 3 5 and then I get uh, the rest are unchanged 4 1 2 are unchanged. So, this is 1 2. So, here is the, the permutation which you get after one step of the, the sorting algorithm. So, again it is really only the action is really here 1 and 2. So, 1 and 2. So, the rest really do not participate in the action. So, it is 3 4 and 5. So, let us see what does it do? Well, earlier you had 1 mapping to 5 and 2 mapping to 3, but now the roles are interchanged. What you have is 1 maps to 3 and 2 maps to 5 ok. So, here is how we can construct this, this, this new diagram. So, I will do exactly what we had earlier. So, 1 maps to 5 and 2 maps to 3 was how the, the, the original uh, permutation looked. Now, what we want to really do is sort of at the place where they cross you sort of want to send them along the, the other sort of the other directions. So, here is what I will do. So, remember I have a lot of flexibility in drawing these triangle diagrams. I do not need to draw them as straight lines. So, what I will do is I will just slightly move this point of intersection here. So, just where they intersect uh, let us erase this a little bit and curve these lines out in this way ok. So, what we have now done is 2 was initially being mapped to 3, but sort of at the point of intersection we just tweaked it a little bit and sent it off to 5 instead. Similarly, 1 which was mapping to 5 at the crossing point we sort of make it change its mind and go off to 3 ok. So, what you really have is a diagram which looks like this the tangle diagram uh, you have sort of split these that, that point of intersection has now become two non intersecting lines ok. So, now what you have done really is gotten rid of one crossing the earlier crossing that you had where one the line joining 1 phi and 2 3 crossed each other at that point you have now resolved that crossing you have now removed that crossing and instead have two non crossing lines. Now, observe the rest of the picture really does not change. So, earlier I had 3 goes to 4. So, I will just draw it the same way I draw the same picture 3 to 4 uh, 4 going to 1 we draw the same picture 5 going to 2 we draw whatever we drew earlier uh, like this. And so, as far as the blue lines are concerned the number of times the blue lines intersect the white lines that does not change because for all practical purposes the white lines are really the same as the old white lines. The only change is taking place in a small neighborhood around the intersection where there is just a slight modification uh, in the two lines. So, the blue lines are not really going to see this uh, you know see the fact that there is something changed at the point of intersection because they are going to be sufficiently far away ok. So, you should really think of this is sort of the correct way of thinking about what happens when you perform the sorting algorithm. You start with some crossing diagram and the lines for 1 and 2 the two adjacent uh, fellows which you say swap if there is a crossing which means that uh, you know the number in the first place in this case a 5 is bigger than the number in the second place which would lead to a crossing. If there is a crossing what you do is you just remove that crossing by sort of doing the procedure that we just talked about. You just erase that point of crossing and then let these two lines become non intersecting. When you do that what you have really achieved is swapping those two numbers because now you are going to map 1 to 3 and you are going to map 2 to 5 ok. So, this is what happens at the level of crossing diagrams when you perform an adjacent swap and the rest of the diagrams unchanged ok. So, it is clear enough that if the original number of crossings is 8 or whatever number it is. So, here is the total number of crossings in the original diagram after performing a one step swap you have of course, reduced the number of crossings by 1 right and which crossing did you get rid of precisely the one where you did this this maneuver and so on. So, again you what you do in the second step of the crossing algorithm is to look at 2 and 3 for instance right. So, the line joining you know the, the one which emanates from 2 does in fact cross the line 
which emanates from 3. So, what you want to do is in the next step of the crossing algorithm is uh, uh, in the sorting algorithm is to resolve this crossing. So, at this point you will erase it and sort of make the top line go along the top and the bottom line go along the bottom right you would make them non intersecting and so on ok. So, so here is a nice exercise you know just purely pictorially. So, all these are really nice because you can do them uh, you know just graphically visually they are uh, rather appealing. So, exercise do this for every one of the, the 8 steps exercise draw all these diagrams. So, repeat this procedure. So, repeat this procedure to obtain all the crossing diagrams all of all the steps. So, all to obtain the tangles for all steps of the algorithm. Okay. And at every step doing the same thing sort of erasing this and sort of making it go up and so on. So, let me just do one more step you just make this go this way this go this way ok. So, and keep doing this. So, when you keep doing this at every step finally, it is sort of magical to see that when you keep doing this again and again at the very end what is it that you are going to get you are going to get a, a, a tangle which sends 1 to 1 which sends 2 to 2 which sends 3 to 3 and so on ok. So, you should sort of see how the various pieces arise. So, for instance, 1 to 1 right what probably happens is you go down like this and you at some point you will slightly resolve this. So, that the 1 now goes up to a 1 like that and a 2 goes to a 2 and so on and so forth ok. So, it is sort of very interesting to see how this this original diagram will sort of change step by step. So, that at the very end it lands up sending every number to itself ok. So, it is a rather nice uh, pictorial exercise and I sort of urge you to uh, work this out entirely yourself. So, that you get a nice pictorial feel for what sorting really does at the level of crossings ok.